307 podcast running uh running a little behind schedule today huh our normal schedule yeah man you're you're just you're too downtrodden you're moving so slow can't even get going hey man what's wrong with you hey i'm back i'm getting working my way back into the groove you know i since i've started running again over the last i guess two weeks now i realize how much i missed running it gives you so much time just for your mind to kind of unravel things, just time alone to think. And um, I didn't realize how much I've missed it the last year. It's been really good. It's really relaxing me, in uh, which is probably needed. I've been wound up pretty tight for the last year and a half. So I'm thankful. My body's feeling good, man. But I'm just getting these long, you know, hour plus spells out in the woods by myself running, and I'm really enjoying it. And so this morning I had to transition from my run immediately into a building full of children and do a VO2 max. College students? Yeah, children. And so that that was that was my rub this morning, you know, going from my my run time into that cameraman acting up. And, what are you talking about? You well, know? you're adaptable, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not adaptable. How did you act up? Lord have mercy. I'm like old single speed bicycle, son. Sheesh. I'm like old single speed. I don't I don't do that. You're good in one lane. Yep, I don't <laughs> do that adaptation bull crap, man. He's, he's got a hate on it because you outperformed him. Well, it makes life rough, don't it? Well, we'll, well, we'll save the performance for the YouTube video, Boo Boo. So for people to know who, okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Well, she kind of gave it away. So, well, there's a lot of variables. I didn't really give it away. We got a full house in here again. I was just telling Blake and Chili a minute ago. Basically, I said, Dad, gone. You, you must really need. <laughs> you, <laughs> coming out. Man. you must really enjoy being on the podcast because every week you're you're asking to come on the podcast i skip a week if i know there's something you guys really want to make fun of me for <laughs> um but i keep hoping that i'll land on a fun podcast but the fun one this one ain't it no i can tell he's all like <laughs> well yeah, it must be tell. nice being able to come on a podcast when you can just get up and leave whenever you feel like it am i allowed to do that What's what you did last week? So I we saw, were wrapping it up, and then you started getting on some hateful tangent about something. So I left. I, but yeah. we were wrapping it up. Um. Well, I just want to let you know, biscuit. We just did a basic course. Actually, the basic course team twenty five this past weekend was a really cool experience for me because that put us up to two hundred graduates. So cool. two hundred people have now been through the basic course training pipeline here with 307 Project, and, you know, it's just turned into a, a, in my opinion, just a really amazing course, and we were out there, and many of the students mentioned you on the podcast, and they were, they were saying that they are with you on the cold plunge. That it's not a dumb recovery activity yeah. for sissies? Eric, 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 for one, specifically said he's, he's on your side with the cold plunge well so the people are listening to you you've got some fans you've got some people that are on your side and um thank you for being here today thanks babe i appreciate it generally if there's an activity that's so difficult you're not willing to do it it's pretty hard another cool thing about this past basic course team uh we now have an official three of seven project dentist oh yeah stovepipe ed power with stroke. power stroke dental in Memphis, Tennessee. I thought you were against the dentist. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is Ed. Ed's pulled thousands of teeth. I asked him, I said, <laughs> I said, Ed, how many teeth have you pulled? He said, man, it's been 40 years. It's kind of hard to keep count. He said, a couple thousand at least. Uh, so. Hopefully he has a necklace. Power stroke dental. Power Stroke is the, he's actually a periodontist. Is his business really called Power Stroke? Because that's so cool if well, it he is. he drives a Power Stroke and he is. So you guys are saying his business is named Power Stroke, but it's not. Yeah. So, yeah. It's I mean, probably like 
Lee Dentistry or something, you know, Ed, like Ed, Power Stroke Dentist. Ed was a le- Ed was a legendary basic course uh, uh, graduate. I mean, he's legendary. Uh, yeah, uh, other than the guy who fell in his throw up, I haven't heard you guys talk specifically about somebody like with their name on the podcast. Yeah, in the basic course. He's our official dentist. He actually gave Chili and I both folding toothbrushes. Yep. You don't brush your teeth. Oh, I do. I'm going to start. I brushed my teeth last night. I started brushing my teeth. Now that we have a dental plan, <laughs> now that we have an official <laughs> dentist. Ed told me, he's like, dude, you need to start brushing your teeth. And he gave me a foldable toothbrush. Does anyone, do you, oh, sorry, sorry. Whoa, whoa. Do you, oh, put that away. Do you remember when we were doing the uh, treadmill run and Chad went into a long tangent about how brushing your teeth and flossing is all a farce and it's not real and it's yeah, like a that. conspiracy? Just and all to, me and Ed talked about out there was how, um, how, how your health starts with your teeth. Yeah, Ed knows. Ed, Ed actually, Ed actually said, um, "There's evidence that like Alzheimer's disease, like the uh, forgetfulness you get when you get old, uh, oh. comes <laughs> comes from your uh, oh. poor gum health." Alzheimer's disease. You ever heard of that? Well, that's. <laughs> I, I was just thinking. Speaking of Alzheimer's, I think it's funny. Alls A L L Z. I think it's funny that Jocko has sent me an anti-aging supplement. He here. said, "Boy, you looking rough." Yeah. What what the? Where's Jocko live? San Diego? I think so. He's out there in San Diego going, geez, look at you. He must have seen that post <laughs> I made. I made a post on, uh, because a while back, jo- I don't think Jocko is sending us this stuff. His team is sending us, us stuff. We just yeah, get, you get it. random stuff in the mail all the time from Jocko's brand. And uh, uh, he sent me some of these energy drinks a while back, and I actually liked them. I mean, I think they, I think they were good. And so I made a video the other day because when we were at a gas station during the mountain bike race, I found a Jocko energy drink in the gas station and I had it in a bag of, and I was eating a bag of Lay's salt and vinegar potato chips. And I looked like a straight bum (laughs) and And a leotard. And I tagged him when I, so he must've saw how rough I was looking. So he has now sent me some anti-aging what is that? A cream or a powder or this, something? Do this I, has spermidine in it. Would I kind of put dust that on my face? Or oh, man, it's, yeah. a, it's a drinkable yep. packet. Oh, okay. You know, it's a daily supplement. Yeah, Slap somebody it. saw you saw you from his team at least and said, oh, <laughs> we got <to> <laughs> that joker is on the downhill, son. <laughs> we got to fix him up. Uh, Brooke, about to take some of that. <laughs> yeah. So speaking, um. On this same vein here, I'm really excited to tell you guys about a new partner that we have here at 3 to 7 Project, Barbell Apparel. This uh, this company, Barbell Apparel, has no kidding that this has been a game changer for me in my own personal life because I have, I'm not really good at picking out clothes that actually look good and function well, okay? So, a few months ago, I was actually looking for a pair of jeans. I've never been able to find a pair of jeans that I act- that I liked, unless, unless it's a pair of jeans that's been washed like 300 times. And then just about the time the blue jeans start getting comfortable, they are worn out. You don't wear it. You've never worn blue jeans. That's exactly because I've never been up. El- you're exactly right. <laughs> that is proving my point. I have never worn blue it's jeans. Overalls because or I shorts. cannot find a pair of blue jeans that were comfortable. So I was looking for a pair because I was like, it would be nice to have a pair of jeans, nice pair of jeans to wear to a speaking engagement. And Barbell Apparel made blue jeans. And I was talking to Chili. Was like, these people have hit us up on uh, on Instagram. And wanted to know if we wanted to have a conversation. I said, well, dang, yeah, this is kind of, this is awesome. Because I was about to order a pair of their blue jeans. So we called, had an hour and a half long conversation with the the owners of Barbell Apparel. Amazing guys. Absolutely amazing guys. We have a lot in common. And this is why this company has been a game changer. We ha- I now have my closet is barbell apparel 
the the jeans, um, the fitness equipment, uh, or not equipment, apparel, it, just the whole. That's my. That is now my wardrobe, and it is absolutely a good feeling to go in your closet and grab any of the clothes that's in there and know that that it's going to fit good it's going to function good and it's going to look good you got back from the speaking engagement the other day and we went on a a hike i forgot what you were doing but you were in those black jeans and we transitioned straight to a long hike and you didn't change. Yeah, I hiked nine miles in those jeans. That's <laughs> yeah. how comfortable they are. I hiked nine miles in those jeans with no underwear on. I don't wear underwear. <laughs> um, yeah, neither of us wear underwear. So that's our Barbell is our new partner. And this is after we have been testing their apparel for uh, uh, oh, well over a month now. I'm putting this stuff through the ringer, man, and it hasn't let me down. Um, I wore their, their lightweight tech t-shirt for four days straight on my bike race. Uh, just last weekend, I wore the long sleeve Havoc shirt for three days straight on the basic course as my base layer. It worked great. Um, it's just the stuff works. It looks good. It fits good. It functions well. And they they have, you can go to one place and buy everything that you need to wear. Mm, yeah. You don't have to go over here and buy, buy your blue jeans and go over here and buy your collared shirts and go over here and buy your fitness apparel. You could just go to one place and they have everything that you need to wear. So I'm really, really excited about the partnership. By the way, it's not a sponsorship. It's a partnership. We're going to continue to work with Barbell and, and build our relationship and hopefully develop and really critique certain pieces of gear um to make things even better and better and better because if there's one thing that we do here at 307 project we test gear well right because of the nature of our business so guys you can go check them out at barbell barbell apparel.com forward slash three of seven if you go there you're going to see all of our favorite apparel items that we use from Barbell. They've created a landing page. So barbellapparel.com forward slash the number three of the number seven. I promise you, you're going to like this stuff. So I'll continue to break it down and tell you guys more about my favorite pieces of gear from them. But thank you for the opportunity to partner. And Barbell. they have great women's gear too. Yeah. Their Not stuff, their, their stuff makes you look good, baby. <laughs> That was even if if it was even possible, wow. if it was even possible to make oh. to make you look better than you already look. You oh, put, boy, you you say that. You Let you me shove the, a little more dirt back. In you there. put that barbell apparel on, and I'm like, whoa, son. <laughs> <laughs> well, good lord, son. All right, so check them <laughs> These out. These transitions well, are so it, awful. It's important that you support the companies that support. 307 Project. All right, guys, we vet these companies. Now, we have two partners now, Barbell, Barbell Apparel and Hoist. Good so, word, boo. That VO2 Max got you tripping. We love you guys. Did you drink any Hoist on that VO2 Max? By the way, um, while I'm on this, everything we're the first video, the first range instructional video came out on Patreon today. So that was video number one. There's going to be a video released on Patreon every day. For the next was well, seven days, right? Seven vi yeah. seven videos. Yeah. The first one was today, so there there will be a new video every day. This is over ninety minutes worth of content with Blake and I out on the range, starting off with literally the gear that you need, how to run a range safely, going through all the major fundamental aspects of shooting, uh, and even then going into some wep weapons maintenance and how to clean and maintain your gear. So it's a comprehensive video series that's going to be hosted on Patreon for you guys. They've started posting today. If you want to check it out, if you like shooting, if that sounds like, you know, it's, of course, everybody has their own little, you know, tips and tricks when it comes to shooting. Tactics are like bum holes. Everybody has one, all right? But this is the way we do the range. This is the way we teach people, and I believe that everybody could pick something up that's going to help them uh, become a better shooter from this video series, all right? So check that out at Patreon. Um, 
I will attach a link to the Patreon page in the show notes of this episode. And if you're interested in joining us and supporting us on Patreon, we greatly appreciate it because it makes a tremendous difference in what we are able to do here at 3F7 Project. And that's and for the VIP. That's for VIP patrons only. Yeah. The video, Okay, the range series. Yeah. All right, that's perfect. Other things we do over there, Resurrected, which is a live call three Sundays a month. The Nuff Said Podcast, which I'm putting out a Nuff Said, new Nuff Said Podcast tomorrow. So you guys stand by for that. Um, it's just a really gl- great place, and it's not a fan club. It's a it's the the core of our community here at 307 Project Interacts on Patreon, in my opinion. Yeah, it's super easy to use. It's just the app. You use it just like any other social media app. So we appreciate you guys that are already supporting us over there. And uh, if you join us on Patreon just for a month, because you can cancel at any time, but we hope if you're joining on Patreon just to see the range series, we hope that when you look at all the other stuff that's on there, which there's hundreds of hours of content banked on Patreon that you get access to if you join, we hope that you look at that stuff and you're like, dang, this is a pretty awesome place to be. And uh, you'll stick around. So that's the goal. Okay, we have to present uh, Instructor Chili to present him with his award today. Ooh, Instructor Chili. You getting an award? Instructor of the Year. <laughs> Yay! Go ahead and show that to the people, Chili. Well, thank you. Instructor Chili got uh, Instructor of the Year this year here at 307 Project. Um, what's the what what's the, the award for? What's it say down there at the bottom, Chili? Uh, for mastery of all s- subject matters, demonstrated ability to motiv- motivate, not talk, motivate. I can't speak right now. Investment of self in the roles and responsibilities at Three of Seven Project, and for being adaptable in all environments. I like that. I, I, I know you. It's hard to speak right now. I know you're emotional <laughs> for <laughs> receiving this award. I like that language, man. Boy, this was a very competitive award. Yeah, um, you you earned it. I tell you what, Ben, Chili, y'all ben. don't Ben. <laughs> I, I said man. It's ben, I said man. I am so worried about you. Today. Y'all don't under, ben, who? Y- a lot of you guys probably don't understand what an integral part of three hundred seven project instructor Chili really is. Um, he runs a lot of operations behind the scenes. Uh, he has tons of knowledge. As a matter of fact, the only reason that we're on YouTube, if you're watching here on YouTube, is because of Instructor Chili. Um, he has helped 307 Project in the most tremendous ways. He will always volunteer for whatever needs to be done, no matter how crappy the job is. Quite literally. He steps up. He steps up. He, he innovates. He leads. He, he doesn't wait around to be told what to do. He is literally the best team member that you could you could ever even comprehend or imagine having. And he his presence at 307 Project has just it's been an integral piece. We would not be where we are today without him. So I suggest you, if you have a business, I suggest you try to find a chili. Good luck. Because he's the only one we've been able to find ever. So, well, I'm not real good at taking compliments, but instead of deflecting any of that, I'll just thank you and uh, let you know how much I appreciate both of you. I, uh, hopefully, that's, that's enough. Hopefully, that's y'all enough. know that I love you and appreciate every day I get to work with you. So, thank Aww. you. This all warms my heart so much. We love you too. I'm not much for sappy stuff, but uh, that means a lot to me. Good job, Ben. <laughs> Thank La- you. Last thing I want to say before we actually dig into um, the meat of today's episode is, you guys, I um, I got my tags for free. Yep, that's right. <laughs> these, let, I haven't even looked at these. For your vehicle? Yeah. So if you, guys, if you guys don't know, I have sworn off buying license plates. Um, dang, son, got that Navy tag, boy. 
Hey, uh, I have Show sworn to the viewers. I have sworn <laughs> off doesn't want to it's got his buying name. license plates. Okay. <laughs> so Blake told me he did. I've got my, I don't give a crap. You got my tag number, man. Freak. I don't give a crap. I'm going to settle down here. Um, where can they stick it? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, Blake told me I got my old Land Cruiser now, which, which by the way, if any of you guys do paint and body work and you want literal cash money in exchange for your talents, <laughs> please hit me up because I'm trying to get this Land Cruiser restored and like paint and body guys are like six months to a year out on work. I literally told Blake yesterday, I said, I think I'm going to go to the local tech college right here in Rome and get a degree in paint and body work because I think I can go to the college, get a degree and learn how to do paint and body work and restore my own vehicle before I could pay someone $10,000 plus dollars to paint the dang thing for me. They don't even want the money. Nobody, they don't need the money. They've got, I don't even understand it, but I have this truck. If you want it, they're going to make some money. There's got to be some young guys out there that are getting into paint and body that want some that, that want some work. It, maybe there's not. Maybe just and nobody knows how to do this stuff anymore. I'm finna go to back to school, son. You talk about a YouTube series. Hey. Chad goes back to school. <laughs> Look, Blake said, you got this old tag on this Land Cruiser. I said, yeah, that belongs to the guy that I bought it from. He said, well, he said, well, you probably ought to at least go get one tag for that thing because if they run that tag it's gonna show canceled registration from the guy you bought it from blake used to be a police officer so he knows all this law stuff and um i said well all right i'm gonna go up to the tag office and get one tag and and put it on there so it's attached to my name but i'm not gonna pay to like re-up it every this and that I went up there to the tag office. I said, look, lady, I don't generally buy tags, but I'm going to, and she looked at me like I was crazy. I said, but I'm going to get one uh, for this truck, just one. And uh, I said, is there anything to do with me being a, a whole broke down veteran? And she said, oh yeah, you could get your tags for free. I don't even have to pay for tags. So I'm legal now. This is every one of you should be able to get your tags for free. If your stupid government wants you to put a tag on your vehicle, that's their prerogative. If, if you want me to put a tag on my vehicle, send me a tag. And yeah, I'll put it on there for you. Well, you're going to get the government campaign going again. So every one of you, Chad for president, every one of you should get <laughs> tags for free. You know, I, I, been, I was thinking about this today. You know, there's a bunch of people out there that complain about companies who have their products made overseas. A lot of consumers complain about companies who have their products made overseas. Apparel, shoes, socks, whatever it may be, right? Well, you consumer, you, you are so ignorant when you complain about these things because you you're you don't understand the reason that companies have to have their products made overseas you don't understand all right i can guarantee you that there are very few companies small companies that say man i would rather have my stuff made in china than than have it made here in america there are very few people who would rather outsource their production overseas, okay? Here's the reason companies are forced to outsource production. Taxes. They have to do it. In order to make any money, they cannot possibly produce their product made in America because they we are taxed so heavily that the only thing that they can possibly do to even even make any profit at all is to outsource their stuff overseas and have it made at a cheaper price. It's the only way to make any money. If, if you, if you took the tax burden, literally 60 plus percent, your pay, your, you work for the government for six months of your life every year. 
You you work for the government for six months for free. If you remove that burden from companies who produce products here in America, like sell products here in America, it would free them up to actually be able to manufacture things here in America and pay a little extra to have it manufactured here in America. Yeah, I just want to throw that out there for you guys. That's one of the reasons. So, that's what I got to say about that. Where are y'all at? What does that mean? I'm right here. Y'all got anything up to this point? I was going to tell you that Chicken Biscuit said he would paint your uh, Toyota for free. Chicken Biscuit? <laughs> Look, man. What's the qu- <laughs> Look, Chicken Biscuit. I, I, I need... I, I, you you got to be a credible... <laughs> <laughs> like chicken biscuit, you might be you might be freaking awesome, dude. He said spray paint. Oh, oh he did. Oh no, 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 no. We're we're looking for a legit. He pr- might mean like spray paint, not spray paint. You know what I mean? Not rattle can. Yeah. You you can you you can be kind of just getting going in this business, but you you're gonna have to have a little bit of credibility and a little bit of things that you can show me that you know other on, jobs man. and and get, and I don't want anybody to do this for free, man. I, I got I got money to do that. I got money to pay you to do this. Come on, yeah, man. man. You, ain't, you ever heard of chicken biscuit painting body? <laughs> chicken, biscuit. chicken biscuit. Chicken biscuit. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you your YouTube handle <laughs> does not instill confidence. <laughs> does not instill my confidence. He's petitioning for Chad for Galactic Overlord. He said. Oh, I like oh. that. Well, you didn't my, even talk about Kajabi. One of my ultimate goals is to become a warlord. Well, we'll talk about Kajabi next week. No. Um, no. can we schedule a podcast where you don't talk the whole time and where we like get to talk about fun stuff and I'll I'll show up to that one? Baby, this is the three of seven podcast, son. Is we should call it the Chad Wright podcast with a sprinkle of chili. That's what we should <laughs> this name is it. The, <laughs> this is the Dag on Three of Seven Podcast, son. I'm gonna wear What's my up, beard. YouTube? Chad with a dash of chili. Chad with a dash of chili. That's What's right. up, YouTube? I'm going to wear my beard next What's week. up, YouTube? <laughs> hey, YouTube. What's up? <laughs> YouTube. You got something? What? If it's, if it's getting to be a little dead air, Chad goes, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> is that something he does often? Does he really do that? It is now. Oh, I just started that. I wonder how much the people who listen <sighs> on like Podbean and Apple and Google how much the podcast has changed since it's a live stream. Like if they've seen a big shift in it, you know, the energy. Because I love live streaming the podcast. Well, I know you do. Yeah. And it's my podcast, so it's really about what I like. That's what I agree. Chili said, did you hear him? It, we should rename it. Instead of three seven podcast, it should be called Chad with a dash of chili. No, I didn't. I don't suggest that. I was just saying. Well, that's, that's what you said. Ben. Oh, you were going on and on about how all he does is talk. Going which on and on. That's what it, that's what he's supposed to do. You know yeah. how bad this would be if he just never talked. Yeah, you, 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 the three of you could not host this podcast. Bet. Okay, we'll let it happen one week oh, then. Boy. Bet. If you guys want to want to hear a podcast, I, episode, hey man, I hosted one where I interviewed you. Yeah, that's true. Chili, me and you was going to do one that day. He was on his bike ride, remember? And he wasn't back in time, didn't send anything. Yep, we yeah. were going to do it. I tell you what I would do one on like next week mm. is listen to him. He's getting so <laughs> mad that he's not talking. It. I would do one on <laughs> on scams. Like, you know, like you say you could scam people really well. And like different scams that people fall victim to. I remember, I told her about our conversation. And, really. and like scams that we could come up with to do to people that would just wreck them that's what i would want to talk about and that i've never heard you fart i would also want to discuss that because it's disturbing well it's true i haven't what's up youtube (laughs) what's up youtube chad we haven't come to you in 15 seconds how you doing (laughs) (laughs) just wanted to check you oh man (laughs) Oh mercy, <laughs> son! Funny. All right. Well, there's a two two subjects that I want to talk about here today. Um, Blake, did you look at Paul Wilder's daily devotional that he sent over this yeah. morning? Yeah. It was very in alignment with the the letter that you wrote to me 
this past week. And so I wanted to talk about that. I wanted you to kind of give the listener some perspective about what's on your heart. And uh, is that okay? Yeah. I I know you're a private guy. I'm not private. Um, (laughs) I just don't ever get any time to talk. So so Uh we got done riding mountain bikes on Monday. And we're in the parking lot and Blake comes up to me and gives me a, a envelope that's about thicker than this notebook right here. And he said, here you go, buddy. I wrote you a letter. And I immediately thought, good gosh, man, I just got <laughs> off the basic course. I'm wore out. Now here's when somebody gives you a darn letter, you've got to expect some bad news. I mean, you're just like, I thought it was my leather of resignation. The, the whole time I'm writing home, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to have to read this thing when I get home, just because like, whatever it is, I just want to face it. <laughs> whatever bad news that he has compiled in this letter here, I just want to face up to it. And, uh, and, and actually when, thank goodness, Thank you, Lord Jesus. It was not a bad letter. It was actually a very edifying letter, very encouraging, well-written. But then he left the challenging part to the end. Um, Then he really was challenging me to uh, hold hold myself to to a higher standard not not for my own self-righteousness sake, but just in to to come cl- more into alignment with scripture. And so you guys know I I will get I will get slammed sideways a lot of times. And I, I like to use a lot of words and and you know think things that not that you can't be humorous, but Blake will give you some more perspective on this. And he, he, he used actually a quote from Brooke and Brooke said one time, you know, when you talk about being conformed into the image of Christ and following Christ and what is in the Bible, how far do you, how far do you take it? How far are you supposed to take it? You know what I mean? He used that. And then I saw Paul Wilder's Paul Wilder sends us out a daily devotional every morning. And it started off with actually the verse that Blake challenged me with. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister uh, grace unto the hearers. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 in the KJV. So give me a little perspective on what God's putting on your heart, Blake, and share share with people the same sort of challenge maybe that you uh, shared with me. If you want to so call it a challenge, it's, it is what it is. But Yeah, I mean, while uh, I can't believe y'all didn't even heckle me about not being on the basic course, but while I wasn't on the, the basic course in my Saturday morning, you know, just prayer and study and praying time and uh, – All of that stuff, uh, this thought just kind of came to my mind. And I think about uh, the people that are close to me in my life a lot through, you know, during that time of prayer and stuff. But um, not often do I share what I think about just because uh, it's not always for them. Sometimes it's just for me. But this time I felt like uh, it was something for Chad and myself. And the reason that I wrote a letter is because I can just convey my thoughts much better if I can sit down and write something out. And uh, so basically the gist of the letter was just to just like Chad said, to hold yourself to a higher standard with particularly your your speech and your action. So, I mean, since we're all open people here, the things that that come to mind are the words like um, freaking and dang and just the uh, the the gesture of of shooting a bird like, you know, even if it's in a joking manner. It, like I, the example I put in there is I said, a lot of times I will either picture Jesus doing what I just did or saying what I just said. And I'm often very disgusted by picturing that image. And if I'm disgusted by it, then it's clearly something I shouldn't have said. Because if, if it, Jesus wouldn't have said or done it, then then why should I be doing it? And I think about that question you ask all the time on that podcast. You may not even remember saying it, but we were talking and you said, well, 
well, how far do you take this? And I'd never been asked that. And I thought, you know, that's a really good question. You should take it all the way. Like you, you should take it all the way. And there's somewhere in there where you still have to be, you know, your words still have to be palatable to people. They still have to be able to receive what you're saying, but how far do you take it? And, and I was convicted myself that I'm not taking it far enough. And I just, I've just had a, if you know, you want to say a stirring in your spirit or whatever. I just feel like something's coming, you know, the, a lot of times when all of us are kind of thinking all, along the same lines of, uh, Chad and I shared two resurrected messages. He wasn't on mine. I didn't tell him what I shared, and they essentially ended up being exactly the same and were thinking along the same lines. And so, I, you know, I just felt like God's just saying, just be ready, just be ready. And I don't know what for, and I don't know exactly what that looks like, but what popped into my head was clean up your speech, clean up your actions. And as I began to think through that, um, me personally, I need to do that, but I also think, Chad needs to do that. I think three of seven project needs to do that because not that we're any better, not that we're any different, but there are a lot of people that listen to this podcast and, and we, we have, we've positively impacted a lot of people, but there's also those things that would drag people backwards. And so we don't want to do that. We're going to do it because we're human, but to the point that we know we shouldn't be, then we should, we should correct that. If you know what I put in that letter, I said, there's no, we talk a lot about good to great, you know, or, or the being good and being the best. It's just a little bit, but with Jesus, it's either right or it's wrong. There's no better or worse. Like it's either wrong to say these words or it's, or it's right to say them. It's, it's not, oh, well, I'm not going to say the F word, but I can say freaking it is not, it's either right or it's wrong. And I told him in that letter when we were out running, and I rolled my ankle and I said, I don't know exactly what came out of my mouth, but it was between shoot and the, the other S word that I'm not going to say on the podcast. It was some mix between those two. And I, I, w- I recognize it as soon as I said it. Then I said some other things and all of that. It's not acceptable. It shouldn't have came out of my mouth. And that's just a reflection of your input. So you think about what are you listening to? What what are even what the speech of the people that you're around, the books you read? It doesn't have to be audible input. It doesn't have to be music, podcast, TV. It could be books you read. It's whatever spurring thoughts in your mind. And so what you meditate on is going to be whatever your input is. And then out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So when your mouth speaks those things, then it's clear what's abundant in your heart because what you've been feeding yourself. And so. It's, it's just like a mirror. And so that was the challenge. And then that scripture, Chad, you know, like he said, if you want to call it a challenge, it was just a, you know, if you want to call it a revelation or whatever, it was just something that God made apparent to me that I felt led to share with him. And I think all of us here at 307 Project should be working on that to get better. And it, me included, I mean, it was to me, but I also thought a lot about Chad during it. So that was the gist of the letter. and um what stood out to me about it? Yeah, no, the 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 prompting that you re, are getting from the Holy Spirit to be ready. Well, it's, it's scriptural. Mm-hmm. Be ready in season and out of season, right? And to be ready for what? Well, there's nothing else that needs to happen here for us to for for us to feel the need to be ready. So here at 307 Project, because, because it, 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 God has made this organization into what it has become, and you guys support us in the way that you do, we go forth into places and proclaim the gospel um, live and in person. And there is nothing, if nothing changes from now to the time we're, we're all we're all dead and gone, or we can't do this anymore. If nothing else changes, there's nothing else that needs to happen for us to, we should be feeling the need to be ready. I I think one thing that I want to make sure that the listeners understand is, is many of you, 
if you take this on board, what Blake just talked about, and you try to really, you, 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 you decide that you're going to make a conscious effort to really bring your mind, your speech, your thoughts, your actions in, into subjection or, or conform them in, more into the likeness of Christ, there is going to be the temptation to get sucked in to the feeling of self-righteousness. I am doing this because I want, I, I, I want to be better. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about at all. No. It has nothing to do with self-righteousness. Do, do not get sucked into the temptation to make it about yourself and how good you are. The whole reason for doing this, the whole reason for doing this is to glorify Christ in a more pure way through your speech, your actions, and to edify or build up mm -hmm. the body of Christ, the people who you come in contact with. It is nothing to do with how good you are. It is to glorify, lift up, put shine light on Christ. I made a post the other day. The end of the post was saying, I hope you will get mature enough to see only Christ in my accomplishments, and to see only Christ in my failures and in my sinful nature. Both, thing, both ends of the spectrum to a mature believer will point you, should point you only to Christ, yeah. right? And that's what this is about. Yeah, yeah totally. That's, that's it. It's not about if you're doing it for the sake of getting better. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, you know, it's, commonplace that if you if you work on the small what seemingly small things you you likely will get better but that's that's a whole different we're not talking about that we're talking yeah. about in light of spiritual things and so you know the biggest thing is to me is that that there is only right or wrong and so while they might seem minor you think it, you're holding yourself to a higher standard than the world accepts because the world much of the world doesn't accept cussing and things like that but they accept the lesser version of those words and the question becomes is it right or is it wrong and so it's it's what is your standard going to be is it going to be right or wrong or is it going to be better or worse or this is okay or it's not because you you're either getting closer to god or you're getting further away there's there's no stagnant there's no stagnation in your relationship with god and so those things that are seemingly minor only detract from your relationship with God and separate you from him to to whatever degree it is that they only separate you a little bit more. And so it's not at all about self gratification, making yourself better. It's about doing what's right. And, and I also want you guys, and please, I want to hear you guys perspective yeah, on this after this say. last comment. I also want you guys to understand the nature of how, the Holy Spirit interacts with us in, in context of this conversation. You, I, I, I believe this, you or me or Blake, we may desire these, these changes in our lives. We likely do not possess the power in ourselves to make the changes that Blake's talking about making. So the best way to, uh, to actually make these changes is to seek the Holy Spirit in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to sift you, to change your heart, to change your speech. Ask him, ask the Holy Spirit to do these things. It might be pain, it, it might be a little painful and uncomfortable for you when you it, it, when he goes to, to doing this, this work in your heart. But I believe, I know at least in my past experience, I used to be a sailor and I used to cuss like a sailor, son. I'm talking about y'all think David Goggins has a foul mouth. You should have heard the way I used to talk. Vouch for me, Biscuit. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I, that stopped in one day. My entire speech changed in one day when I received the Holy Spirit. No, it changed in an instant. It was just in the evening, so I didn't realize how much it had changed until I got up the next morning and actually had to talk to people again. <laughs> yeah. 
it what I, I didn't have the power to change the entire way that I talk. Literally, my the, the majority of my vocabulary changed because of the power of the Holy Spirit and Him reshaping the net my 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 nature. And so these other things that Blake's talking, this other challenge is taking it being conformed more into the likeness of Christ, even more and even more and even more, asking for more from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, conform me into the image of Christ. Sift me. Show me. Convict me. That's the way it works. It's not just a simple conscious decision. Some people may have the the discipline to be able to do that. I'd like to see them. Before y'all comment, can I share one or clear up one thing? Some uh, Aaron Brown, I think that's the mailman, right, Chili? Aaron yeah, Brown. yeah, that is, yeah. So yeah. mailman, he's just asking, uh, ask good question. You know, he's just asking what is a, what is a cuss word? Why is a cuss word a sin? And, oh, yeah. and essentially, you know, I mean, you could go down a long rabbit hole with that. But what I'm talking about is is words that are detracting. It, they're not edifying. They're not building up. They're just taking away. And yeah. so um, that's why I'm mentioning. I'm just using the blanket word of cussing you know foul mouth yep. and and actions and the things the actions you do the words you say even the things you ponder on are they building up or are they detracting from and so that's what i'm talking about considering well since he asked that i'll just say too that i've thought about that my whole life because i've always found it very odd when people say that they don't want you to cuss and then i hear them speak and then the wor- I hear the words that they say, and I go, well, what makes, what what compiled your list? What made that okay and that not okay? It never seemed consistent to me. I am of the opinion that there's, a, a, almost any word has a context where if you use it and are in control of what you're saying, like, that it's that it can be used like I, I don't dang as a substitute for another word can be just as if you if you're saying it out of this emotional uncontrolled manner what's the difference yeah yeah but if you say the the other the the, the harsher version of a cuss word that you want to think of maybe there's no context but but sometimes if it's if it's if it's in control and there's a purpose behind it and you know, then, then what's the, what's the issue? You know, I I just, I think people look at that very funny and they, and they have a very subjective compilation of words that are permissible and are not permissible, uh, regardless of context. And I don't think it makes any logical sense, but what makes total logical sense is what Blake is saying is that any word, whether it's a cuss word or just some random word, like, table (laughs) or rock or whatever you wanted to replace it with used in that manner. That's not in an edifying manner is you might as well call it a cuss, call it whatever you want. It's, it's, it's impermissible. It's missing the standard, which by the way, many people forget that the standard that we have is perfection, that, that that's the standard. And, and that's why we all miss it. Right. But just because the standard is perfection, what you see a lot of people do is realize that they're never going to hit it and quit striving for it anyway. They say, well, I'm not I can't be perfect, so I'm not going to strive for it. Well, no, you can't be perfect. You can't. But that is not. The, the the exact opposite needs to be the case that you actually strive for it harder when you realize that, because you've you've admitted and recognized that you can't do it but going the other way makes your life 10 times worse and that's where you see this nihilistic mentality that has overtaken the united states and the world and created a sense of apathy that has gripped the core of nearly every human whether they realize it or not we're an apathetic population of humans and that's why you see things that seem to degrade on a daily basis. It's born out of nihilistic apathy. Hmm. And what does nihilistic mean? Essentially nothing matters. Got it. There there's no good or there's no right or wrong. Nothing matters. 
There's no point to this. You see a lot of people hopeless like that. And it's just that mentality of, man, I can't seem to win. I can't seem to do anything right. So they quit. And the whole point of what Blake is saying, the point of the gospel is quitting in that situation is, is, is clearly what's gotten the world into the state that it's in a- a- accepting. Well, yeah, I don't, you know, it's not that bad. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. It, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, it's just, it's just whatever. I mean, it's, I'm, I could, I'm not like that guy. Yeah. That's exactly what you said in your speech at that baseball thing. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's like, it's very well summed up. It's, it's accepting. It's accepting, not striving for that standard. And people quit striving for it. I can't drive it home enough because you're not going to hit it. But you have to keep striving for it. And and that's why... Um, yeah, that, that, that's why the, the, the people that get the furthest in life get the furthest because they keep striving for it. So. Go ahead, Biscuit. I'm just going to be really honest with how what I'm thinking. I totally agree with what you guys are saying with everything. All three of you guys have said, Um, but my mind goes to, well, y'all, y'all all three know me well. I mean, my jobs, my life, like, I mean, all of my jobs have been male dominated and my just basic personality. I've always had guy friends and I've always liked humor. And so I do a lot of the things we're talking about, but in the name of humor and sarcasm, and it's in a like light joking way to try to make people laugh. And so that was where my mind went to in this conversation. I thought of a few things that I could clean up like genuinely that I do often that I was like, yeah, when Blake was talking, I was like, you could change that. But like, I love, that's what she said jokes. And I'm like, do I feel convicted about that? Like it's a it's a sexual reference. And I'm like, okay, well, what's my intention behind it? And then like, so when I start doing that with a lot of things, like I flip people off all the time. It's never in anger. It's like somebody's in the gym talking trash and I like hold up the bird across the gym, you know, and it's like makes everybody laugh and like lightens the mood. Could I find different ways to lighten the mood they probably wouldn't be this i don't know does that does that make sense to you guys like so my thinking right now and i'm not justifying i'm not saying i'm right i don't know what i think about it this is just what's coming up in my mind is like i've heard christians before say there's no place for sarcasm in christianity have you guys heard that like old school people say like I you haven't sh- heard that, but I could imagine there are people who yeah, yeah, like, think that. You should not be sarcastic. You should not be snarky. You should obviously never make a joke about sex. Like, that's a big no-no. You know, and I've always just been like, Ugh. I just don't, if if the, if the goal, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's, what is the goal? Like, you know, I mean, the goal that, is the goal for me to. is to feel connected to people and make people laugh. Now, there are 90 percent of the people like in my life. I can't interact with that way. It has to be a certain type of person who I know, like, will kind of accept that well. Um, but that's always just been my like love language is that kind of humor like farts. I love talking about farts. Is that edifying God? Not at all. Am I wrong? For talking about farts? Yeah. No. Well, then, so it's not edifying God. Well, it can also edify people, like to build up people. How do you build up people with farts? What's, I mean, you're, 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 we're literally getting into like the nature of humor. But that's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't like the, the, the point that I was making earlier with all of these words that are permissible or not. And it all depends on, like Blake said, the goal and where your heart at is at. And I think also the control with which you're speaking, like 
no matter what word you say, if it's said, if you're not in control of your rudder, like Chad's driven home a million times and something spews out of your mouth, whether it's a traditional cuss word or not, that's not good. Right. You've lost control of your rudder. Yep. I don't care what you said. You've lost control. Not good. But something for the sake of humor that you're in control of. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, that's not wrong. So one of the things that went through my mind was a lot of us, the four of us will speak to each other a lot and be like, yeah, dummy, you know, like that's just something we do. And I'm like, should, should we fix that? Like, I like it. I, y'all don't ever say that to me. And I feel like, oh, how, how, you know, yeah. but it isn't, it isn't building anything up. It isn't promoting unless it goes like, that's what I'm saying. The, the gist of what I'm saying is, is there a category outside of this where I can put my humor and still skate by with like <laughs> flipping the bird and like, well, I mean, yeah, it, it, this is also a discussion on not only humor, but language and linguistics. And it's, I mean, that, that can be very confusing for people, but like, you use dummy as a term of endearment. Yeah, we love each somebody other. Somebody may yeah. use dummy to literally try to hurt somebody. I, in my opinion, there's a difference. But what? It's the same word, but there's a difference. Like, you, why is it wrong to call him a dummy if well, you're. So, my mind earlier when that came to my mind was what Blake said, and I totally agree, was that we are kind of, our lives are. Like, I think about this with our relationship a lot. Like, our lives are kind of public in a way. And what we say is public. And people have picked up on Chad and I interacting and thought we were being disrespectful to each other. We might have been that a few times. <laughs> but for the most part, it's just our natural banter. But like you're saying, people could people could pick up on that. And I don't, I don't want to say people are that impressionable, but I guess some people might. Well, they are. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, and like I get what you're saying about setting an example, like as a company that is the root of this company is cool. Jesus. Yeah. Not even as a company, as a follower of Christ, more importantly. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the that's the big thing. And so I think to make sure you're talking to your mic, tech guy, to me, the <laughs> like, you know, flipping the bird, it's a hand gesture. But what ha what words are tied to that hand gesture? So. You flip someone the bird, what runs through your head? I mean, I don't know. For me, the word runs through my head. If somebody shoots me a bird, like that's what they're saying. And then that's what I'm, then that is the end. In, that's input for me. Someone has just given me input to a very small degree. And I have just thought about those words. And so to me, again, I, I said, I often picture either Jesus doing or saying the things that I said. And if you can picture that, and this is for me, it's not for everybody, but if I can, if I'm okay with seeing Jesus do or say the things that I said, knowing the intent of my heart, then I'm fine with it. But sometimes if I cringe and I'm like, mm, that was not, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't look right. Then I say, no, I don't need to be doing that. Nobody said that, that this process of being conformed more into the image of Christ would be easy. Nobody said that it would make um that it would fit the agendas and conversations and context of the world. These or things, even your personality. Yeah, I mean these these things sound extreme. Mm -hmm. They sound extreme because of the culture in which we live in. That's why these changes sound extreme yeah. and, and and it makes and a lot of people will listen to this and say well you're just you're going to just be too much of a square and you're not going to be any fun to be around that that in my opinion is not the case um i believe that we can be conformed to as close as possible to the image of christ and have the most fun the most fulfilling moments, the most funny moments, the most rich experience in life that life itself has to offer if we allow that conforming to happen. Now, it may not sound that way to us. We may think, oh, well, if we stop 
doing these these things like flipping the bird or making sexual jokes or things like that, it may sound like, oh, life's not going to be any fun anymore. The Holy Spirit's going to replace those parts of you, that, that, that humorous nature, because there's nothing in Scripture that says you can't have humor. You, you, you're supposed to laugh. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to enjoy this life at certain moments. The Holy Spirit is going to replace those parts of you with things that are even better. That's the way, that's the way that it, it's going to work, right? Um, but it, it seems extreme. Well, yeah. the difficulty with that with humor is generally the nature of humans with humor is you make fun and point out taboo subjects in culture, right? It's just to get a reaction. You know, yeah. so, so yeah. Th that's, yeah, I mean, that, it would be difficult to have the same sense of humor without those things. You know, like you said, it would have to be different. Yeah. But like, let me ask you this. If a married man who's a stand up comedian, who's a Christian is talking about something like he's making a joke about his own sex life in like a stand up routine. Like are you guys gonna be like, oof, Se a Christian. Uh, he couldn't he shouldn't sex in and of its there is nothing actually wrong with sex in and of itself. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, se sex dirty and filthy and uh, heinous. Yeah. Oh hey, can I say something real <laughs> quick? Wait, wait, wait. The, the nature of oh. sex has been perverted oh. by pornography. No, just in general the, the, it's filthy. The nature of sex and what it actually <laughs> is meant to be is has been completely perverted. Like our, our even view of that subject is nowhere even close to what it was created and designed to be between a man and a woman, between a husband and a wife specifically. And we, it, it, we're way out of context the way that we even oh. think about sex. So when I say that's what she said, I'm talking about that's what I said about yeah. you from now on. Okay. This is for this is for everyone else that's listening this to this. Here's here's one thing I want to tell you. None of us here on this podcast have the answers for you. This is for every one of you who's listening to this that feels that their heart may be pricked a little by this conversation. This is for you to pray about, mm -hmm. to seek the Holy Spirit about. To, to genuinely turn yourself over to the Holy Spirit and to say, Holy Spirit, sift me, convict me, change me into the likeness of your image. And, and you're going to look different than me. Brooke you, Biscuit, you're going to look different than me within the body of Christ. You can be conformed into the image of Christ and look completely different in, in the way that you're used, your gifts, your purpose, the way that you reach people. Same with every one of us. Thank God we're all different. Thank God we can all be, thank God the Holy Spirit makes us all a little different. Yeah. Or else, good gosh, the, we would be a bunch of boring, just, yeah, it'd it would be, boring. Be, it'd be miserable. And that's such a good point, too. Like, I ain't got all the answers. So anything that I say, Lord knows I ain't telling you what to, I mean, like, I know the answer, mm -hmm. but... But I mean, this conversation is good, and I'm glad Blake brought that up to you and then shared it publicly because it's a needed conversation. Can yeah. I say something about um, ahead, boo -boo. Blake? Uh, I I think I think I fall under that category of a little prickly. Like just when you were talking, I was like, hmm, I don't know. So I had some things come up that I think mine are more negative they're not curse words. They're negative words that I use a lot that are very benign by themselves, but I use them negatively to whine and complain and be, but what I wanted to say is what is your, what is your mom's mom's name? Your grandma? Her actual name? Yeah. Uh, Charlotte. Unless it's a secret like yours. No. Okay. <laughs> um, Charlotte said that I heard that Charlotte tunes in every week. Mm-hmm. And that she likes her favorite. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Well, she said this episode. Then she said, uh, she said that, and she told Tracy. She said, "Now, when that Blake talks, 
I sit up and listen. <laughs> and Tracy said something like, well, mom, you don't listen with Chili and Chad. He was like, no, when, when Blake talks, you really got to, <laughs> you really got to listen. And that's, I mean, today's a great example of that. Yeah. Well, it's just all, I mean, you can sit. make sure you're talking to your mic. It's, it's all the last truly one. just glory to God is, is maybe corny as that sounds, but uh, I even wrote in that letter, you know, to chat about the things we say. And then I went on to say even further, you should consider how you say them and the manner in which you say them. And I put uh, that, do you, do you start to see, or maybe you start to understand why the Bible says be slow to speak because there's so many things you could should consider before you say the words that you're going to say, or because we talk with our actions too, or we talk with our tone of voice. That's a form, that's communication, our hands, our gestures, all of that. That's all part of it. And so being slow to speak, that, that it makes much more sense in light of this because it has such a big impact and there's so many different variables to consider. So I'm not the wisest one here or anything like that. I just, I try to think about, is this what God would have me say? And especially something, if you're going to tell somebody, hey, I think, I think God has this message for you, then you better really spend some time thinking about it because that's a, a very, uh, that, that's a very strong statement. And you shouldn't frivolously make that and say, I think God wants to tell you this. I think God wants to, because it's not right. And so I spent days thinking about writing. I wrote the letter immediately because I, I felt strongly about it. But then I spent days praying and thinking, is this really what God has for, for me? Or, and even more importantly, should I share this with Chad? Because uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to say that and to do those things. And, you should greatly consider that before you tell somebody that and even before you you think about the things for your own life. And this is clearly a prickly topic, if you'll say that, because many people on here are con conflicted and, you know, saying, oh, yeah, this is right. That's mm -hmm. right. And it's back and forth. It's not a unanimous decision of, hey, this is it. And it's kind of unique to most of the chats that we get. And so yeah. uh, just like Chad said, what he said was perfect. I would challenge you guys to consider this for yourself. I'm not, I didn't say that the Lord has this for you. Uh, although I do think you should be slow to speak. You should consider the way people are receiving what you're putting out. I do think all of those things are true, but just like you said, it's going to look different for all of us. So, man, being slow to speak, it's all about bringing yourself into subjection and controlling what you say. And it makes people uncomfortable when you're slow to speak. Like it changes the cadence with which you talk, you know. I mean, it's it's very interesting. It's uh, you're it's definitely countercultural mm -hmm. to actually think about what you say and be slow to speak. You want to learn to get slow to speak? Go do some public speaking. Yeah. Hmm. That'll make that'll that'll teach you to be slow to speak. I, yeah. Are you about to wrap it up? Because I have another I have a thought. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, sweet pea. Your posture says you're about to wrap it up. Well, I'm going to get Blake to uh, YouTube. If you have any questions, start dropping them in now. I'll get Blake to go over those here in a minute. I'm going to share one more thing from Scripture after you're finished up with what you, your statement, baby. Well, I thought about our, like, we touched on personalities and, and different personalities. Like, I'm humor. Like, my humor kind of falls, can fall into this category and I thought about you, like kind of your hardcore, like I, I was trying to think while you were talking a word to use, like how you'll get fired up and like yell at people, you know, and it has like an angry tone, but a lot of people are motivated by that. I, my personality type, I'm not, but like <laughs> you're, you're, you yeah, tell so people they're, true. they're turds and they need to do this. And like, it's not, it is not edifying. It's not building up but it is effective at getting people to change their lives. So like same, same with me questioning, like not a loophole with humor, but like, are there things that depending on your intentions and like, what are you trying? Like it's, preachers get angry and mad and talk to people well, in a negative way. You, you shouldn't get angry or mad. So that that's a, that's a very uh, key thing and and you you can't discern none of you guys can discern my heart so all i can do is be honest with you and then you can tell me that i'm full of it if you want to but to be honest with you the reason i get fired up 
which is different than angry. The reason I get so passionate, the reason I do yell quite often is because I genuinely care about the people that we're spending time with in training. We have to explain this to people that come and train with us at the basic course. We have to explain, I have to explain to them, Hey, I'm getting, I'm getting, raising my voice right now. I'm, I'm sound very passionate and a little bit scary. It's because I care so much. I deeply care about people that we have the opportunity to spend time with or to talk to through this, uh, media platform right here, this podcast. And if, if I cared less, I wouldn't get so passionate about it, right? So the posture of my heart, when you guys do hear me yelling at you, uh, at you about being fat and about not holding, not striving for personal excellence in all areas of your life and all of these subjects that I am passionate about, the reason I get so passionate is because I know there is more for you in this life. And the, 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 the reality is some people can't receive that, but they again, cannot discern my heart. I had an appointment with Bob. I had an appointment with Bobby the other day. He worked on my, my hand cause my hand still <laughs> stuck. <laughs> uh, I had an appointment with Bobby the other day and Bobby jokingly said, Bobby just lost uh, how many? How much pounds? Like I think he's going up on seventy pounds. Seventy right. pounds, Bobby yeah. did. He didn't even look like the same guy. He's an amazing Christian man, by the way. And Bobby said, "You know the reason I lost all this weight." He said, "I got tired of you yelling yelling at me about being fat." <laughs> <laughs> and and you know it's like jokingly he he said that. Like obviously he he's he's a, he's an intelligent human being. And he knew his health. He was putting his health and in he jeopardy. And he just had his first grandbaby. Yeah. He, so there were a lot of elements that played into it. But but I believe one, one, even if it's just a minor element, it was hopefully the Lord used me to, to put the message out in a way that I put it out because I actually care about men like Bobby. I actually care about him. He's an awesome person. Like, I want him to be healthy. I really want him to be healthy. And and he he was able to receive that. And even if it was just in some small way. So please don't confuse my passion with anger. You're angry sometimes. Yes, I do get angry sometimes because I am human. Yes. That that can that does happen. That's exactly right. But when I am pushing you to strive for excellence in your life and I and it gets loud and kind of scary <laughs> it's because I care all right yeah. I'm gonna share one more thing in scripture and we'll take any questions that you guys have that are worth answering or not answering but at least giving some perspective on uh just really quick I read this in scripture this morning and I thought it was a, an interesting um an interesting perspective on something that I think many of us miss when we when we try to understand the gospel. The gospel being Christ lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. He was dead for three days in the tomb, and then he was resurrected. Well, a lot of people miss what happened during those three days. What, scripture gives us some context on that. When Christ was in the tomb, dead in the flesh, was he just like, was he up in heaven having a party? Where where was he at? Like, what? where was his spirit? Where was Christ, the spirit of God, when it departed the body? Have y'all ever thought about this? Yeah, we've talked about it on a podcast before. I've never thought about it. You where, know, where was he? Well, he his spirit, people put a lot of emphasis on the physical death that Jesus had, which uh, I'm not pretending that it was some easy death. I mean, good grief. It was, I mean, I mean you, it's hard pressed to find much worse, but I don't, I've always thought about it when I was young about what would a physical death being really severe have actually done for the cleansing of sins. 
you had to, for that concept to make sense, he had to bear the weight of the sins of all humanity, past, present, and future. Bearing the weight means take the punishment for. The punishment for wasn't death on a cross. It was hell. Yep. So that's what I've always. Yep. What? I mean, like, I don't think people, I mean, I don't. It's always astounded me. So the time I was a tiny young lad uh, taking Bible classes about people placing this emphasis and, and not talking about that part of the conversation about the physical, the physical nature of it, which is easy to do because it was horrific. Right. But other people did die in a similar way. Yeah. I mean, it's. The, the, the there apostles. had to, the, the, the difference was. Your spirit had to take that punishment, take hell and defeat it. And overcome it. Yeah. He had to go to hell. It gives you a it gives you a whole nother perspective on what Christ did. Yes. And it is it is very scriptural. And I, I read this just in this one place right here. There may be other references to it in scripture. <clears throat> but just as Chile said, for Christ to have Christ actually, when he bore the sins of humanity, remember on the cross when it's accounted of Christ saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? Is because God the Father actually cannot look upon, cannot be connected with wickedness and sin. And so Christ bore all of that in himself. While he was dead, he descended into hell. It says that? Yeah. Where? And... That is the only that well, is there's no other explanation. That is for, why we had that is why. So the punishment, like Chili said, what we actually deserve. It, it wasn't death on the cross. Is not a death on the cross. We deserve eternal damnation. In order for him to give us victory over that, he had to bear that too. And had to overcome that. And so I'll just read this to you in, in scripture. Uh, I encourage you guys to research this in, in other areas, but it'll give you a, a whole nother appreciation for what Christ did for us. This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. I want to give you a little commentary here. Is it ever been interesting to you that God decided to redeem humanity through suffering? He could have did it any other way. He could have. It's his plan. He could have came up with any other plan. That, But he chose to redeem humanity through suffering. That was our, our last podcast about emotion. I sent you a message afterwards, and I thought about that. I was like, if... I think there's something there. Like God chose for, like you said, he could have just shown up and been like, yo, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Instead, he died an excruciating death that for humans, I don't know about for God, is very emotional. Like it's an emotional thing. It's very sad and heartbreaking and gut wrenching and just like. Even, yeah. I mean, even the life he lived. Yeah. Even the life he lived was filled with, with suffering and, and burdens and. So, 18, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. Christ, the just for the unjust, us, that he might bring us to God, reconcile us to God through his suffering, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive or quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometime or formerly were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing wherein a few that is eight souls were saved by water now when you read the context on this verse 19 is very interesting it talks about after Christ dying in the flesh he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Now you have to really look at these words. Chili's really good at this. You have to break these words down. Um, the word that's used here, preached, 
is a is a specific word, and you have I've got commentary in here. While in Hades, this in the spirit, while in hell, in the spirit, Christ preached that is proclaimed his victory over death in Hades. Note that hell in these verses is the Greek Hades, the great pit at the center center of the earth where lost souls and rebellious angels are confined. So when when verse 19 is, is talking of preaching unto the spirits who are in prison, if you research these words and you 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 look into this, this prison that is being spoken of here where these spirits exist is the prison where evil spirits are confined. It's identified elsewhere as Tartarus. And we see in 2 Peter, this same word that's used for, pri- for prison. We find it here. 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell. It's the same word that's being used here. And then deliver, and he delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. This is hell that is speaking of. God actually descends into hell and proclaims his victory over hell and over evil while he is there. So he's not just in hell suffering. Even in his suffering, while he descends into hell, he is at the same time rubbing it in their faces, proclaiming victory amongst them in hell. Think about that, man. This is some deep stuff, man. Buddy Slimmer brings up a good point, or or just a uh, perspective here. Uh, He's talking about when... Jesus is talking to the thief on the cross and he says, you know, surely you will, you'll be with me in paradise today. And I guess that, you know, would really get down to what today means and paradise. But he's saying today, when we die here on this cross, you will be with me in paradise. Uh, it's a little bit contradictory to what you're saying, but I, I don't know. I would have to study it. I've no, never it studied isn't. this. Well, he's omnipresent, isn't he? Could no, he be in no, heaven? It isn't. That's that's not contradictory at all. That that's that's operating. That's placing all of these spiritual matters that's being discussed into the context of the time and space that we're bound by on this earth. There's nothing contradictory about that. I mean, we're essentially all dead, and this is over right now in the spiritual realm. Oh Lord, you can't talk about time in in the same manner. I mean, yeah. you you cannot do that. Well, but because Jesus he, existed in time at the time he said this. I think that's why Jesus used a time reference of today. Right. What What should he have said? You will be with me later. I'm going to hell. I'll see you in three days. <laughs> I mean, he could have said later. Yeah. I mean, look, like that's 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 the type of contradictory or potential contradictory thing that people get way wrapped around way too often. You could look at other things to have better discussions, in my opinion, because time does not exist like we think it does. And if you're literally talking about a spiritual realm matter, you know, a day is of a, is a, like a thousand, you know, you can't, you can't even wrap your head around what yeah. that means. So I don't get too wrapped up in that. What do you think? No, I, I think you're, um, you're exactly right. When you try to fit these things in the context of time, space, and matter that we're bound by in this created universe, it's really hard to reconcile for some people these things. The fact that Jesus can descend into hell, which had to happen. That was the that was the ultimate punishment that we deserved. For us to receive victory over that, for him to take upon the punishment that we deserve, he had to go there. That that yeah. that that has no contradiction with what we're talking about here, because as soon as the spirit of Christ leaves the physical body. We cannot comprehend how it interacts or or what, what the capabilities are. It's even deeper than that because the moment you use the word, when you've just put yourself back in time, where was Jesus when he died? That's why, that's precisely why it's foolish. Yeah. So is there any, because I've read that exact scripture before 
And what I thought it was, which now I know I'm wrong because that sounds very valid what you're saying. I always thought it was a reference to like him going back and getting the people that had lived up until the point of of him dying on the cross for us that lived under the law and like maybe didn't sacrifice the animal or didn't follow the tradition and went to hell because of it because of Jesus wasn't there yet. The Bible does not say that there is any second chances for those people for 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 all for for humanity everybody everybody wants to I thought there's something about the lake of fire and the end where he like does a some some kind of second for the people of magical arts and like I'll bring that back I'll, <laughs> I'll get that Don't laugh at me like I'm stupid please so, Here's here's another thing that that people find very hard to reconcile with There have been billions of people who have lived on the earth. Am I correct in saying billions of people who have lived on the earth? <laughs> yeah, there's billions now. Uh, 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 across the, the spectrum of time that, that humanity has existed that had never heard of God, the creator of the universe, or Jesus Christ. Oh. I don't know if that's billions. Well, it may not be billions, but there have been a lot. And, and it's really hard for people to come to terms with the fact that how could a human who never knew of God, how could it be, how could it be a potential, how is there the potential that that person could possibly go to hell because they never had the, the chance? Well, here's the ultimate answer. I don't have the, I don't have the exact answer no. to how that works, but here, here is one possibility. All of the humans who lived on earth that never had heard of God, the creator of the universe, it, if they went to hell, they went to hell. And they will be there for eternity. I have this God, scripture pulled up when you have time. I want you to understand something. God, the creator of the universe, is sovereign. That means whatever, he, whatever his plan is, however the way things work, that's just the way they work. And if you don't like it, well, you're just gonna have to not like it. And if if that's if that's the way, if that's what happened to everybody who who has died in some primitive culture who had not have heard of God, if that if if they suffer eternity in hell, if that's if that is in fact the way God designed it, he's sovereign. He well, can design it that way. Well, yeah, he can design it any way he wants. But I would take issue with that as well, right? Because that's that's obviously a hard thing to wrap your head around. You don't want that to be the case. Doesn't mean it's not, but that's what I'm trying to say. But you don't want it to be the case. And you know, if you take seriously the idea that no man is without excuse, I wouldn't limit the 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 way in at least interpretively, I wouldn't limit the way that salvation is achieved by the ways that you see now like now that we have the complete revelation right, of god like in our hands could have looked differently I, it could you know there's ideas of things being written on your heart and yes other yeah, we can't we, right. we we can't nail that down I, chili's exactly right you can't limit the possibility of that being the god's design but also, you can't limit the possibility that a sovereign God designed it in a way that you don't agree with. That's Go ahead, baby. This, Talk about these mystical arts. I really wish you wouldn't laugh at me like that. I well, you already, did say, not very edifying, you, is it? I, no, you I, did say mystical arts. He has such a better... He's been reading the Bible since he was a kid. <laughs> And I just started a few years ago. And so he's all the time busting me up with like, wow, 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 you don't know. Like, I'm trying here. You're doing good, baby. I'm just aggravating you. Whatever. It says, um, this is in Revelation. I think it's chapter 19, verse 11. It might be 21. I can't see the top of this page. It says, um, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which was the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as in recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, 
and the dead and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. I am not saying I understand what that means. I'm just saying the two times that I've heard people give commentary on it and I've seen it, there is a question of like, is there a second judgment for someone? Like, it sounds like that. Why would they bring the dead back again? That is the great white throne judgment. That is the the final end all be all. But don't we get judged right when we die? And like you were saying, we should go straight to one or the other, right? Why does it need to happen again at the that, end? That is I'm a, gonna be um, chilly right now. Well, we leave existence of time when we die. So yep, that is a really hard thing to comprehend. Where so is is there when you pass from this life? A purgatory where you just sit when, and wait. When, when, yeah. When you pass from this this life in the absence of time, is it not possible to is it not possible to be at the great white throne throne judgment? We just warp it, speed it, through it, the it, second dimension. Immediately. I, 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 I'm, I'm saying, man, when you take out the, t the equation of the, the confines of time. Now, it is in my understanding at that judgment, the final judgment, where the books are open. I would have to do a much deeper study but to go. We, we're to go not into supposed this. to die. Like, ooh, my arms are jiggling real bad. We're not supposed to die. We, like Christians, we don't die, right? So why would they be pulling the dead? The dead. What? It, that's what I'm saying. Like I've never heard them reference what. What? We all die physically. It's. Yeah, but they're saying they're pulling. Why would they pull people out of Hades to judge them again? Why would they do that? If they're there, they're there. Like, they, if they're there, they're supposed to stay there. They went there for a reason. Why would they get pulled out to judge at the White Throne again? Have you have you ever thought that there that there might be potential there there might be the potential there might be potential different levels of repercussion, or is it all the same? What do you mean by that? This is about to blow. Yeah, my head yeah, off, yeah. By the way, I, I, look, we'll, we'll do we'll do another podcast on on this specific. Oh, geez. We'll do another because <laughs> we, we could be another three hours here, and, and and this will actually take us coming to to coming to better understanding and articulating this better to actually have to open the book and look at the different. Um, we're talking about eschatology now. Oh God. Uh, the the different events that are ha that will uh, there's all kinds of stuff the thousand the thousand year reign that now people you hear people talk about yeah there's all kinds of stuff that would play into this timeline uh, that we can somewhat gather from what scripture has to say looking at it from our perspective so yeah let's not get too deep into the great white throne judgment the can mailman I said you've been reading too much Sproul. Yeah. Uh, oh, shout out RC, RC oh. Sproul. Um, surprised by suffering. That's the book I'm reading right now. Can I tell you um, what might fall into that category earlier <clears throat> that we were talking about that my mind did right when uh, you guys started talking about that? And it was very surprising. I didn't know that when you asked that question about where he went. Well, you guys have been saying that where you guys kick Satan in the balls. Well, somebody <laughs> on the comments. <laughs> said i look at the comments during this no, not you guys that's him <laughs> somebody somebody in the comments made a reference and i like the visual for me that jesus had to go get the keys from satan and so my mind automatically like played this out of like jesus walking down kicking satan in the balls <laughs> satan drops the the keys because he has to bend over and grab you know and then he takes the keys and he's oh. like he goes like this oh wait <laughs> yeah Later, turds. Hey, he, and then he ascends and does his thing. He rubbed. He literally rubbed it in their face. Yeah. He went down, and in the midst of his suffering, he rubbed it in their face. I don't think that's what really happened. Just to be clear, that's yeah. just what my brain did. Do we got any questions, Blake? Yeah, a couple of things, and I just want to say one thing real quick. Going All back right. to what we were talking Chili's about earlier, Grandma will be listening now. Tune in, Grandma. Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, 
you when you were considering the things we were talking about earlier about you know what we do and how how far do you take it i think you should consider how far you take it not how far you can get by with what you want to do <laughs> I mean, i'm not saying that to you i'm just saying that to everybody because a lot of people were commenting uh, about this or, or can i do this or is this okay and and you shouldn't think is this okay you should think how close can i get to how much can i be like jesus not how much can i get by with and doing these things and still kind of be like Jesus. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. I want to say thanks to Bean. I don't know if this is the Bean. Ooh. I think it is. Who's a Bean? $12, $12 here. And then we got a $10 from Ben Kenobi. So thank you too for yeah, thank thank you guys giving over. that. And the question that I've chose to ask is from Scutterbuster666. He's a, oh, Scutterbuster, you know, dude. He's a regular. Isn't yeah, he? he's a, a regular reg. on here. He's, he asked a good question. Though. I think a lot of people might question this as well and that's why i want to ask it he said does god punish you if you are undecided or struggling with your faith my dad crashed his car pretty bad yesterday and i'm wondering if it's my fault for not being a hundred percent at the moment still finding faith and that's a might seem like an easy question for us to answer but i think it's worth answering because a, a lot of people could think along those lines so does God punish you for being undecided or struggling in your faith? Lord, um, Lord, I hope you don't punish us for being undecided or struggling in our faith. I, I want to tell you something, Scudder Buster. <laughs> the nature of your faith from now until you depart this place is going to have multiple seasons of struggle and and undecidedness the lord will not punish you the lord looks upon you with compassion with love with long suffering the lord will not punish you for being undecided in your faith he sees your struggles the bible actually says i think it was jesus christ himself that said to his disciples in, 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 in a roundabout way, without me referencing the verse, um, disciples, you guys believe in me and you've seen me and spent time with me. How blessed, how blessed are the people that will come after you that will believe upon me that have never even seen me before. No, the, 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 the measure of your faith, again, as Chili said, is never going to reach perfection. The only people who ever lived on earth that, that could have perfect belief in Christ are the disciples who saw him crucified and risen again from the dead. They, 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 descent, they, um, they ascended above faith to true, actual knowing that this is the Son of God. They witnessed it. They witnessed it. Please, brothers and sisters, never, ever, ever beat yourself up for moments of unbelief or, or not knowing or just sometimes you get to the point where you're like, I want, is, is this even real? What do I, what do, I do with this? Yeah, because the people that witnessed it still wondered if it, they doubted. I mean, not, they well, denied after they after they saw him the complete picture and he was resurrected. They no longer doubted. Right. Once they saw him alive again. So, Christian, never beat yourself up for that. That is the that is a that is the natural um, part of all of our walks with Christ. And so, no, that's my opinion on it. What do you think? Well, I mean. Yeah, I don't. As far as the actual question and not getting sidetracked, yeah, I don't. I think people have a tendency to try to understand why everything that has happened happens. I remember I was in an old Sunday school class when I was eight years old. I had just old bird in there that was the, she had been teaching Sunday school for probably 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, I remember she would say some pretty off the wall stuff one time and she got, I heard her one time having a conversation saying something to this other old bird about uh, that her husband had just died and she was explaining that and the, 
difficulty in that. And she, I sat there and listened to her connect that to something that she had done wrong a few years back. Mm. And that was essentially why God took her husband. And I remember being there as a little eight year old sitting there hearing that going, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm not even joking. I thought, how do you know why things happened? And I've, that thought process has continued with me to this day. We don't like, we can't, we can't connect the dots to everything that happens. You, you could do that endlessly. Um, I think that's thinking something bad happened because of a lapse in your fate. Yeah. That, there's, that's, there's nothing, there's no connection there that you can discern. So the disciples, the disciples asked this question to Jesus one time. They said, they saw, uh, I think it was a blind man. They said, Jesus, why is this man blind? Is it because he sinned or is it because his parents <laughs> sinned? And Jesus said, it wasn't either one. This particular feller is blind so that God can be glorified through his ailment. Mm -hmm. And then he healed him. So in that particular case, that was the reason. A lot of times you can get sucked into thinking there are only, well, the disciples in this case were sucked into thinking there are only two reasons, two reasons that are two possible reasons why this man's blind. Because either he sinned or his parents sinned. Well, no. There's all kinds of reasons. Why. Well, actually, you could sum it up into one reason being that it's the natural consequence of time being created and God's plan being put into motion. Everything yes. had to happen the way that it has happened. So that's the reason. It's not because of something that's Scut going on with you. Scudder Buster, I want you to go on Amazon right now or wherever you get your books from. This is the whole context of this book I'm reading. Surprised by Suffering by R.C. Spurl. Scudderbutt, if you don't have the money to buy that book, Scudderbutt. Uh, <laughs> drop it in the, if you don't have the money to buy the book, drop it in the comments. I'll send you a check and pay you back for the book. A check. Or, just or, send him the, just can, send yeah, the book. Just or or, or the I'll book. send you the book. <laughs> yeah. what, whatever. All right. I'll but go buy that check. book, man. It's, it, it breaks down everything that we're talking about right here. There are answers to these questions that you guys have. It just takes diligent seeking. I, I need, I think, and I, I know we're like, we're wrapping up, but when you guys talk about that scudder buster, I, I kind of relate to that, that I've been on a faith journey for a while and mine would be in particular, like a, a trouble with depression, anxiety, um, mental health. Like if my mental health wasn't going well, I would think that it was a problem with my faith. Like, okay, you must be failing if, if you're not feeling peace and like, you know, peace. Um, but just to, I, we can't, I know we don't have time to get into that. I'm just saying I relate to what he's saying. And I think you're, what you're saying is good advice and exactly right. Yeah. Truth is truth. And what God says about you and for you is true. And you can interpret that through your circumstances. You can't say I'm feeling this or going through this and let me interpret your love for me through that. Right. What he says is true in the Bible, regardless of how you feel or what you're going through. Right. Well, all right, guys. For all that, you, for all you guys that complain that we only put one podcast out a week, here's you a two hour, almost a two hour long podcast. So this should get you by, at least for a couple of commutes back and forth to work. Well, you put out another one on Patreon now. Enough said. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. Enough said. Podcast. I'm putting out that tomorrow. Um. Yeah. It should be a good episode. I recorded it yesterday, so hope you guys enjoy it. Anyways, we love you guys. Thanks for supporting the podcast. If you think anybody might get something out of this, would you please share the episode with them? It's kind of the only way that this grows. It's a very grassroots type of growth. We've been doing the podcast for a long, long time. And um, it all it all comes from you guys passing the word which is something we see at the basic course and all the trainings that we do. People don't know how to pass the dang word, man. So we would appreciate that. Enough said. <laughs>